Hi, this is Edison Avalar, and in this video we're going to discuss how to create heads-up displays in Unity 3D. If you remember, in our last video we created our gems, added particles, as well as audio, so the user knows that A, they can, they can collect this item, and B, they can hear feedback. To add more depth to our game, we really want to give them some kind of way of remembering how many items they've collected. And to do that, we're going to go into Photoshop. I already created a simple texture and call it gems. You don't have to create the text in, in, excuse me, you don't have to create the text in Photoshop. You can go ahead and create a Unity 3D, but for simplicity, I'm just going to create it in Photoshop, save it out. And in Unity, the way we create our heads up display is, is using our GUI texture and our GUI text. We're going to start by creating a GUI texture. As you can see, Unity comes default with their own texture. What we're going to do is, is rename this to HUD, just so we know. And now let's go over the positioning. If you notice, this is more or less a percentage here instead of our normal you know, 10 by 10 pixels. And the way Unity's GUI texture works is, is it actually displays the texture on the current camera. So what we're going to do is, is really change these values, our X and Y's, to, to point it in the upper left hand corner. Now if you're used to working in computer graphics, your first inclination would be to zero, 00. But what you'll notice is, is Unity 00 for our textures is actually at the bottom left of the screen. So the way we would texture this is, is by do 9.7 for the Y. And we'll do 0.1 for the X. Now, if you'll notice, if we just set this to 1.1, one, 1.1 one, one, one will flush it to the top right. So we can keep this. We don't want this to be up this high. Once again, uh, we're going to add our own texture. Let's move this back over to 0.1. And we'll grab our HUD and just drop it over this texture and now you see it there now right away you'll notice that unity has actually changed these numbers and I know that those numbers aren't correct so let's go back into Photoshop check our image size is 100 by 60 so let's change this to 100 by 60 so now you see that the clarity is a lot better now something else I want to show you is, is what happens when you change our aspect ratio You'll notice that every time we change our aspect ratio, our gem texture looks just a little different. And in order to fix that, what we can do is, is provide a, a more accurate decimal to where our texture should be. So we'll add maybe 0 0.15, it might be too far, 0 0.13. And over here we'll do 9, maybe 9.6, now it's still too high. Uh, let's do 9. Four. We have a nine three, so there's a little more padding. Now we change our aspect ratio. Free aspect four three. You notice it, it's still off a little bit to the left, but overall it stays in the correct spot. Maybe ten twenty four. So if you really want, you can change this. And maybe the aspect ratios that you know your users are going to use just to make sure that they're somewhat equal. This might be a little too far. But once again, it depends on what your, your actual output resolution will be. We'll leave this at 1.6. So that's completely fine. All right, now let's create other our, our GUI text. And our GUI text is actually going to be um, the text that we're going to manipulate. So let's rename this to HUD underscore TXT. I'm just going to copy that. You know, same thing. We're just going to set it up. 0.2. Might be a little too far. 0.15. As you can see, some of our text is still visible. But the reason why our text is behind our gem layer is, is because of Z index. So we can simply change that to one and that'll bring that in front of our GUI texture. And now we can really play around with it. 
Just slide it. Nine, maybe. Go up a little bit. Nine, six. And if you want to, you can also make modifications here to the font. Change the size. We'll do 18. Now this is fine. Over here is the actual text. We can change that to zero. So it's actually um, something that we're going to use. We'll modify this a little bit. All right, cool. Now that we have our texture created and we have our text created, let's go ahead and add our, our settings script to our player. Let's just double check that and add it. Okay, so I already have it added to our player. Just open up this script. And what we're going to do is, is add a few variables. First variable will be, we'll make these private variables because we don't want them changed. So we'll call this max max gems did it oops wrong language <laughs> did a type it integer <clears throat> we'll also create a variable and we'll make this one public and we'll call it number of gems and also data type this <laughs> integer and we'll set it to zero this will set to five and we'll also add a function called add gems. And we're going to check if number of gems is less than or equal to max gems sorry <laughs> then we're going to add gems so in this case we're going to num gems plus plus then we're going to uh, debug dot log number of gems And all this does is, is it keeps us from going over our max gems. And in case we do go over our max gems, we'll just log all gems selected. Just so that we know that all the gems that they can collect have been collected. All right, perfect. Now, if you remember in our gem script, we have our audio that plays, we yield for two seconds, then we destroy the object. Well, what we're going to do now is, is use our collider and access the settings. So before the sound finished playing, we're actually going to actually, right when you collect the gem, we'll give you that update and we'll do C dot get component right and we're going to get the component settings now we're going to add gem I think it's add gems or gem go back in here okay add gems all right perfect now we're just going to hit play I'll find an error. Max gems. Let's see where we went wrong. Private variable max gems. Okay, perfect. So as we collect the items, we see one, we see two. So our next job now will be instead of just uh, logging this, we're going to now actually add this to our texture or in our case our text so remember the name of our text is HUD text so let's copy this actually we don't need to really copy it so now what we're going to do is, is show you a new technique and this is how you find uh, any component within the unity project so let's go ahead and do game object dot find 
we want to find the HUD underscore text dot GUI text dot text and set this equal to if you've ever worked in programming languages uh, especially in this case we don't really want unity to try to figure out what we want to do because if we add gems it's just going to tell us that it's a number and the way we we um, stop that is, is by just adding an empty string so I'll show you this anyways see can't convert an integer to a string which is absolutely fine um, so all we have to do is add our plus an empty string and now when we collect our gems perfect perfect all right so now what we can do is, is we can go ahead and get rid of this we know this is adding our gems we don't have to keep the comment there now this we don't really have to keep this because every time we add this gem is going to look for it so just for the sakes the sake of keeping our code nice and clean we'll create a new variable and we'll call it um, h text is it we'll, you know it's a game object game object and we're going to do two things function and we're going to overwrite our wake function which runs just when the game starts and instead of doing this we're going to have our h text equal to our object we'll do this <clears throat> excuse me and what will happen is is our number of gems is is set to zero so whenever we begin the game it will actually set it to zero so let's go into unity set this text to 50 hit play and then boom, it automatically sets it to zero. And now, instead of every time we run this add gems function, we find instead of finding the object every time we add the gem, we're just going to run this function. There you go. Perfect. Now we go back into Unity, hit play. Gems. Perfect. Now, just to show you that we do have our max gem working, let's go ahead and grab our gem prefab and let's add a few more onto the stage. Let's make this larger. Duplicate it. That gives us four. Actually, I want to make this a little more difficult. Well, let's move this over. So now we have four on the stage. And let's add the fifth one to. All right, perfect. All right, perfect. So now all we're going to do is hit play. get out of this game we hit play gem one gem two gem three without falling off <laughs> right, gem four now we're going for the the kill shot perfect so now all five gems are collected what we should do is add a sixth gem just to show you um, how it works. Let's double up. Four. I'll go faster. Oh, I missed that one. Five. Now remember, we set our max gem to five. So let's see what happens. Oh, we're still collecting six. All right, so let's double check our code. 
first thing I see wrong is we really don't want it equal to. So let's just remove that equal. And that'll just make sure that we never equal our max gems. So now we can add. Oh, of course, that's not a function. So now let's double check our work and see if that fixed it. Perfect. All right, now we collect our six one, and it says all gems are collected. So now we know that the code worked. There's there's a few things that we can do to to definitely update this. Like if this is actually equal to this, we can in this case update this text. Maybe add another if function, and if num number of gems if number of gems is equal to max gems oops non capital if it's equal to max gems then let's just log this message game over go back and we're just going to collect everything again. as you can see our message all gems selected game over is already there now we're going to collect our sixth one and all gems selected so all that does is really give us a little leg room for for debugging if we want to add any features or or just make sure that certain things happen in this case. Maybe this is a max gem and maybe we want you to collect a six gem as a bonus gem. So these are just different options we can use to really add more depth to our game. All right, so that concludes our video on adding a heads up display to Unity 3D. Just a quick recap. We have our add gem functionality. We added this new concept of game object that finds so we can find um, components within our game. We also added it in the wake function just to make sure this doesn't get called all the time because once again, if you think about it, game object that find checks the whole Unity project. You have 10,000 items or 10,000 components. That's a lot of information to consistently run through. So just by adding it in the wake, we lessen the amount of computing needed to find an object. And of course, let's not forget GUI text and the GUI texture. All right, perfect. That's it now for, for this video. In our next video, we're going to talk about maybe creating a platform where the user can go to actually end the game. This is Edison Abelard, and I'm out.